What is up everybody? Welcome back to another video. I'm actually here in my Land Rover. I'm down at the racetrack right now. Sorry I'm on my phone right now. Um, I completely forgot to bring my camera with me. Uh, where's the camera? There you go. Uh, I'm down here at UMC because I was getting my trophy. Talking cars with these guys again. Now we're only two months away from the season. I'm starting to get really stoked. So let's get some work done with the car because I've got some competition I'm gonna have to face. And here we are back in the garage. Changing something a little bit nicer to work on, and I've got some gloves on already because it is cold in here. It is colder in here than it has been before, at least most recently. But like I said, we're going to go ahead and start tackling this carpet. It's really simple. There's only a few things we still need to remove from the carpet area that's going to allow us to pull the whole thing out. So we're going to go ahead and get into that. First and foremost, we got these little kick panels here, one on each side. This one should be super simple. It should just be pull off. Yeah, these things are super easy to take off. Just two little clips on this one. The driver's side is going to be a little bit different, but I will explain that when we get there. So what makes the driver's side a little bit different is we have the trunk release button there, we have the hood release there, and then we have this guy here. Now sometimes they hide screws behind these or bolts. I don't feel like there's one here, so there's a screw on this that's holding this into place. So we're going to unscrew that first, then we're going to give this a little bit of a pry and see if that's bolted in. If it is, then I'm going to figure out how it unbolts. It'll probably mean removing this base plate here. Now how this is screwed in is with just a uh, standard Phillips. It's a self-tapping screw, which is kind of weird, but it looks to be right. Uh, underneath that, this whole assembly here, there's another Phillips head screw that needs to come out. Okay, and with both of those out, it looks like this doesn't actually pull off the same way the other side does. So I can't just pry it out like that because this is right here. It's kind of just slid in. So it needs to pull out this way, which means that this is almost definitely in some way attached. So we're gonna see if we can get this off and there's probably a bolt under there. There was no bolt. As soon as I pulled on that, the whole thing decided it wanted to come out. So there it be. Now just to unplug the unplug the trunk and the whole thing's out. Unfortunately, the shifter is also one of those things that's in the way, which should be pretty simple. It just needs to be unplugged because there's a light in the top of this. I'm pretty sure all of them have it. Might just be M's, but it's light in the top of it. it tells you what gear it is. Now this step is tricky. From what I understand, with the E46 shift knobs, you've got to pull it up and off, breaking the glue. So it's going to take a lot of force. And there it is. And while at it, I need to get this guy off, which is just a 10 millimeter nut. And moving on. Now one of the many things that I have to unfortunately take off to get the carpet out is the gas pedal, but thankfully it's all electronic, so there's no like physical cable connection. And it is just, there's a little white tab there. And you're going to want to take that little white tab, take something like a screwdriver, and you're going to want to press down on it. So when you're pressing down, you can slide. It's very tight on this car. Slide the gas pedal out. bracket needs to come off which is an allen key number six allen key uh, first thing I'm going to note this is the back of the pedal that's the hole that you stick in to push down the pin it's got three tiers at which this guy grips into it which I didn't realize it had those three tiers 
I thought it was just the one and I struggled to get it past the second. It doesn't give a lot, so you don't really know you're pushing it down. It really, it's really hard to tell. So I just assumed there was nothing else in there and it broke off. So this is broken. I'll have to pull a new one out of the junkyard. And then when you pull that out, you have this end here. Now I've seen a lot of these be broken on this end. It's almost like it doesn't want to come out. These also don't give a lot. As you can see, there's the other one right there. From here, this, this being the top, you want to pry it up like I was doing. And then you want to push it away that way. Now that little pin inside, you want to push it that way. But if you're lucky, you won't break any of the pins like I do. Once I had broken this though, I knew this was going to have to get replaced. I knew I just had to get it out so that when I went to the junkyard to get another one, then I could just replace it then. Now with the gas pedal finally out and disconnected, there's a few clips. There's one right there. There's one right there, and there's also one on that side of the car hidden behind the fuse box. And then there's these guys right here on the floor, one there, and obviously one over there. So all four of those, five of those have to come out. And then there's also an issue with these wires on the heater core, the ones that go to the radio, the AC controls, all that stuff. They come up through holes in the carpet, so I have to remove them from the heater core, disconnect them there. That way when I pull the carpet out, they can feed underneath the carpet where they belong. Don't mind the continuity error. I had to get my hair cut. But with all that stuff finally removed, there's two things that I need to take out still to allow me to get this carpet out. And then we can start trying to see if it's even a doable thing. So on each side of the heater core, which is the centerpiece here, there's these air vents, which run into the floor and they run under the carpet to out here. And that's them right there. But these guys, this whole assembly comes off right here. If you can see that. There's clips, one on each side, and there's same thing for there. And then the whole assembly will rock out. So we're on the home stretch, kind of. Problem is, I took my ruler here, and I jammed it underneath the heater core to see if I could feel anything, because I can't see under there clearly. But see if I could feel anything that was holding it to the floor especially where, as we can see here, the carpet that I had shown in my last video, I'll just throw it up again, had the hole in the center right here. That lines up nearly perfectly with these air vents. So that means that that hole is right there. My ruler won't go in any further, and I have used a pry bar to pry it up as much as I can, but there's a piece of plastic that goes all the way down. I think it goes through that hole and touches the body of the car. And my assumption is, that that's more of a standoff to prevent this thing from all the weight falling down on it because it's, it's pulling down on this a lot and I believe all the screws are on the other side of the firewall up the front. That being said, that's going to pose a real challenge for pulling out this carpet. I'm going to see if I can pull it out and the idea is I'm going to try when I get to the point where I have to pull that over, I'm going to try and lift this up enough that I can get that standoff on top of the carpet and then I'll continue to pull it out. Hopefully it works. carpet anywhere in that car and as you may have noticed the hood is open and that's because while filming this I took an hour break trying to get the carpet out because I was struggling 
and I was looking at options and I was gonna come back and say, I give up, I'm gonna cut it out. Cause I was looking at options of maybe loosening the heater core to give me some room. But instead of saying that, first I decided it might be worth trying to pull it out a little bit more to see if I can get it around that little stub that it was on. Now I'm gonna throw up a photo of the carpet right now. This is the carpet that I pulled out of the car, and as you can see, there is no damage here where the pole was sticking out of the heater core to rest on. It just ran over the carpet. It did indent the carpet when I was first pulling it out, but I was able to rub that out with my finger, so the carpet came out completely undamaged. I will throw up the weight of everything that came out of the car that's staying out of the car up over in that corner for you guys so that you can see how much weight that's gonna save me. That is very important weight. All the weight that I took out of the back, that was also important, but I've been taking so much weight out of the back of the car that the car is gonna become front heavy if I just kept doing that. So now that we've removed something significant out of the front of the car, that's gonna help me a lot. Although that was an absolutely exhausting effort to do, it is entirely possible to pull the carpet out of the car without having to remove the heater core. I think that just about covers everything I had planned for this video. If you guys like the content, maybe consider liking. If you guys are interested in seeing more of the project that I have coming on with this M3, go ahead and drop a subscribe. I've got seven more weeks before the racing season starts, so that's seven more weeks for me to get some projects done, and I'm super stoked about that. Anyway guys, hope you like the video, and I'll see you in the next one.